The next one we have Charles Walsh. He said in response to our discussion of favourite authors, H.G. Wells, Jules Verne, Isaac Asimov, need I say why? They invented the sci-fi world. Did they though? Um, that's an interesting question. What is the first science fiction book? Where the Epic it... of Gilgamesh. When's that from? It's a Babylonian tale, or a Sumerian. Sorry, not Babylonian, Sumerian. It's a very ancient Sumerian so, text. So when, whereabouts is that from? Are we, are we talking we're talking prehistory? We're talking, uh, well, it's not prehistory. We've, we've got it. It's BC. Right, okay. But, um, I mean... It involves time travel. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I think that it's... You know, you, to say a certain book started sci-fi ignores the fact that people have been making stuff up for millennia mm. um, to tell tall stories. I mean, like, look the, at the Vikings. The yeah. tales from Vi Norse mythology, you know, about Asgard and uh, Thor and Odin and that. You know, that that's, pre that's like... That's pretty much sci-fi, really, isn't it? You know, sci-fi fantasy crossover stuff. So, you know, we're talking about stuff that goes way, way back. Yes, Jules Verne and H.G. Wells are exceptionally good. Um, and, you know, they've kind of... They've shaped the direction that science fiction has gone in. But um, to say that, uh, you know, this comes back to the subjectivity as well mm. that we talked about before, whereby, you know, yeah, that they all have equal merit. Uh, you can you can argue a case for equal merit for all of these authors. Um, it's just you put me on the spot and went, one, pick a favourite and why. Yeah. So, you know, you could have, I could easily have picked Jules Verne or Isaac Asimov or H.G. Wells um, or um, Richard Matheson, uh, Paul Anderson, um, C.M. Cornbluth, um, you know, I, I could, uh, Frank Herbert, I could make an argument for every single one of these, but um, in the end we picked who we did. That doesn't take away from mm. other authors. Here's a question that I wanted to ask. The reason I picked this particular uh, statement out was even if something like the uh, the Arabian Nights uh, has some references to that which you would expect to be sci-fi now, some of the plot lines mm. suggest sci-fi, so all about uh, transformations and things. The Epic of Gilgamesh has time travel in it. Frankenstein is clearly science fiction. I thought Azte the Aztecs have stories about a space being. Mm -hmm. So the, the sci-fi... The ancient Native Americans in the North America area as well have a being coming from space and creating life. Oh, right. Well, um, somewhere near Roswell, is this, or is this... No, this, I'm, I'm talking about Native American mythology yeah, yeah, about yeah. Britain, and just things like that. What would you say starts sci-fi, or is there not actually a clear point where you, where you can say, that's the point where sci-fi began? Is it more of a spectrum than a specific point? I think it's more of a spectrum. And, uh, you know, I, I think I think science fiction is a logical product of the way the human imagination works, mm. uh, the way that we can imagine uh, really far out type things that, that actually couldn't exist in real life. You know, we can imagine things that um, then may subsequently become technologically possible but the you know people like da vinci leonardo da vinci thought about things like helicopters mm -hmm. and tanks and stuff before these things were actually proven possible to exist um and i think it's a product of the human imagination being able to imagine these fanciful things um things like science fiction fantasy fiction Horror as well, you know, horror is kind of a branch of science fiction, you know, creating yeah. these, these weird monsters, you know, where, where's the difference between a horror monster from the deep and a horror monster from outer space? Yeah, um, I, I would argue that it's not a spectrum and sci-fi starts at a specific point. 1895. What happens in 1895? Release of the time machine in novel form 
and release of the Mechanical Butcher on film. But uh, when, uh, what about things like Jules Verne? 20,000 Jules Verne, the Jules Jules Verne the earth. is sci-fi, but he's a more romanticist. It's very different. He's not... You know you like your new way of sci-fi, where it's not so much about the technology as the experience. Mm. Well, Jules Verne is very much in the same uh, genre. genre. It's in, in the same mould, let's put it that way. He's more about the fanciful nature of things and what's going on because they can do X, Y, and Z, not about why they can do X, Y, and Z. He'd be, he'd be the kind of person who, for a Star Trek transporter, it's a means to get you to the planet, like in the original yeah, Star Trek. So he, he doesn't explain his technology. It, not necessarily. It, to, in Vern, it's more a means to an end. The point is that you can go and do something, not that mm. there's a reason you can do well, it. Well, actually, in some respects, Jules Vern feels a lot like steampunk, but he's like, he's like the, the origin of steampunk in a way. And at a point where steam technology was the main thing. Yeah, he was writing for the point, he was a Victorian. Yeah. Whereas now people are trying to ape a kind of a Victorian outlook on sci-fi. So like space, 1899. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody with muskets and... Uh, muskets and a moustache you could trust. Oh, yes. And... Um, was it mutton chop sideburns, <laughs> steam powered zeppelins? Yeah, yes, and fabulous corsets and bustles. So I think we're going to disagree on when sci-fi starts. Yeah, I mean, I think as well. It, it's something that goes all through the ages. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can see it up there. I'm not gonna get up and get it, but I've got myths of the Norsemen, and when you read that, there's a lot of elements in there about you know these su supreme beings from uh, another world that cross into our world and have this this kind of a magic and uh, it's yes it's more fantasy fiction but surely science fiction and fantasy fiction are a lot closer than you might think well yeah that's why they're always linked science fiction and fantasy in books yeah, sci-fi and fantasy sf plus f it's the diff it's a different way of uh, doing the same sort of tale Mm. Magic replaces science, or science replaces magic. Yeah, well, because surely um, magic uh, is actually, you know, technology. If you went to um, to the year 500 BC... Are you going to invoke Clark's Law? No, if you went to 500 BC and took with you tech that we have and take for granted, to the people in 500 BC, it would, you know, an iPhone would seem like magic. Television you are invoking would, Clark's is law. Is it true? But no, if you showed somebody from 500 BC a television set, to them, it would just be magic. You couldn't, you couldn't begin to make them comprehend, like, oh, actually, no, it's like, you know, we, we, you know, we, we take light and we, we turn it into an electrical signal and we transmit it and then we turn it back from an electrical signal into... Um, specific points of light in a, either in a, a CRT where it scans and tracks and makes phosphorus compounds glow. You know, that, that would be like, yeah. but like you just go, okay, it's magic, and they're like, ah. Oh. Arthur C. Clarke's Clarke's Law: Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. You know, I think he's he's absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. 